Okay, my name's Joe Mahler. I'm with Riley Rods. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about effortless fly casting. And what I mean by that is I'm going to make it as easy on you to do this as humanly possible. So um, typically what, what I see when I, when I see people casting, I'll see something that looks like this. And if you enjoy doing it that way, that's great. But where I'm from in southwest Florida, I coach a lot of guys uh, and, and women who have had shoulder surgeries. And so they really don't have that range of motion. So, and so as I, as I got more into teaching, I noticed that if I casted like I had those restrictions, my casting got better. It, it got more accurate. It actually even went farther. And so the, um, the cast that I like looks more like this. And it'll go, it'll go absolutely every bit as far. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about, about how to make a perfect cast. And if you do these four things, you'll have the perfect cast. And here's what, here's what I call a perfect cast. If I, if I make no disturbance when the fly leaves the water. Now I'll show you, the, I'll show you what I don't want. Watch, watch the line on the water. Okay, you see that rip? And we don't think about that a whole lot, but because you're thinking about this fish over here and you yank the line off of the water and you just really put him on high alert. Now, maybe he doesn't flee, but you put him on high alert. You've, you've made him pretty aware that you're there. So a pickup, a perfect pickup to me looks like this. I want you to watch the line. And all I'm going to see is just that exit splash of the fly. Do you see the difference? I'll do it again. I'm going to lift the line, pluck the fly. Out I go. Now, the next thing is how much disturbance I make when it lands. So if I make a cast that looks like this, well, it went out, it, it, was, it was probably okay, but I want you to watch what, it, what the line does on the water. And even that one, now I'll even do it softer. Okay, and it, but all of those told the fish I was hearing. So the presentation I want, I don't care if it's bonefish or trout or, uh, or largemouth bass, the presentation I want is gonna be much softer like that okay and and so uh the four the four things that we're going to that we're going to talk about are first the pickup smooth pickup with no disturbance a smooth landing with no disturbance and the one that nobody talks about is how much noise it makes in between and this is going to be a little bit hard for me to for everybody to hear but i want you to to watch and, and maybe you'll hear it Now, I can hear that I can hear that rod going back and forth. What's happening is that there's no load on the rod. I'm casting too hard. I'm using my arm too much. If I take the rod and I and I move it through the air like that, it has no load on it. So it's going to vibrate when it goes through. You get nervous out <laughs> there, aren't you? Now, now watch this. If I put even a even a oops, let me get this straight here. If I even put just a small load on the rod and do that same thing, it doesn't make noise because there's no vibration. It only vibrates when there's no tension. So I'm going to show you two casts. One will have not so much tension. And one's going to have a lot of tension. Now, I know which one I like best, and one is a lot more effortless. And so let's, let's look at the, at the mechanics of it. Let's look at how much my arm moves. Well, it went a long way, so that was okay. Now I want you, everybody to watch my elbow, watch my shoulder, and you don't need to watch the line because it's gonna go exactly where I want it to go. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna lift, pluck the fly, and you're gonna notice that that's pretty quiet all the way through. And so that's what I would call an effortless cast. Okay, so let's go, let's, let's start with the pickup. Because the pickup is the foundation of the cast to me. And it, anybody that's built a house or built a mini barn or something like that knows that the foundation really is the most important part. If that's crooked, then you have to adjust throughout uh, the whole construction. So if I have a lousy pickup, then I have to do something to counter that. I have to make up for my, for my sloppy work. So the pickup that I like, and 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about grip here for just a second before I, I do that, because people always ask me about it. I always hold the rod with my index finger. And this particular rod that we've designed it to have a flat spot, it has a little logo right there so you know exactly where to put your finger. The reason I do that is there's actually a few reasons. One is I get more power. And somebody always says, well, the thumb's stronger. You know, the thumb is stronger. The thumb is stronger for certain. But if you look at where my thumb is as opposed to where my finger is, my finger's about twice as long. So what I have, I have a longer lever working the, working the rod. If I have my thumb, I'm gonna put more power on. If I have my finger, I don't need to put as much power on because I've got a longer lever. That's one key. The other one is, and if you, if you ever teach anyone to fly cast, you'll notice the first thing is, most of the time, the rod goes way back. That's because the natural stopping point for the thumb is right here. The natural stopping point for the finger is right here. So now watch the two natural stopping points. See how far the rod goes back? Now watch my finger, and it's going to naturally stop straight up in the air. So that's one thing. The other one is, the other reason I, I like this is because if you look at my thumb, now everybody can see, you see this narrow view of my hand. Now if I put my finger up, you have the, the flat view of my hand. So if, I had, so if I were going to pick up a hammer and drive a nail, you would see that. And so people tend to... Not everybody, but most people tend to, when they cast with their thumb, to chop it down. I spend a good amount of my time saying, no, stop the rod, stop the rod, stop the rod higher. When your hand is flattened, it's like you were pushing. You're just pushing a door open. So watch, watch my hand. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push it. And so I really want the, I want the line to go out, not down. Anybody, I'm not too concerned about distance, but when you talk about distance, that trajectory, if I, if I do this, it doesn't matter how hard I cast. The line is going to stop when it touches the water. Okay, and so I want you to watch my, watch my arm. Okay, I've got a letter L. I've just formed a letter L with my arm. Now watch what happens when I make a letter V. Same cast, same power, but I'm going to stop up here. And the line's going to go much farther out, just because it had a higher trajectory. Okay, so... Um, so that's a little bit about the grip. So let's get back to the pickup. Um, I use my wrist more than anybody that I know. And they even make a brace that, that keeps your wrist from moving. I'm saying use your wrist a lot. If you have wrist problems, then don't. But so the pickup that I like relies on my wrist. I want you to watch how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift it. I'm going to lift the rod on a horizontal. That's the first step. That's, that is really the most important move right there. Now, as I do that, watch how my wrist gives. I'm keeping the rod horizontal. My wrist is giving. Now, my wrist is cocked. And watch, look at the power I get just from my wrist. That was just with my wrist. So let's put that together. I'm gonna, and, and once I move, I'm not going to stop when I get to that point. But I'm going to lift and pluck. We'll do that again. That's a little too much more than line than we need right now. We'll get there. Okay, so watch again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift, pluck the fly. And then the next part is the, is the back cast. So we've, we've raised it up here. Now my wrist is cocked. I'm going to move the rod as little as possible. And the reason I'm going to move it as little as possible because the more I move the rod... The, the more energy I lose, the straighter I get it, and that and that's because if I want you to watch uh, watch the line in the air, I'm going to do, and I, I, I love doing this. I, so uh, I'm going to move the rod this much, and then I'm going to move it this much, and that's a great one. If you're if you're watching a buddy cast or something, just stand back and just just measure his cast. So I'm going to show you the first one where I consider it to be too much rod movement. Now, I'm going to keep that in the air, but I want you to look at what the line's doing. Now, there are times that is the right cast to make, and there's situations for, for everything. But now, watch as, as, my, as my arc gets narrower. And now it's narrower. And, and look, at, look at how little I'm moving my arm. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a haul to it. 
which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And now I'm hardly, I'm hardly moving that at all, which means I can move it straighter. Okay, so we've got our pickup. We've got our back cast. And now if my back cast is good, it should be really close to that ring. And I'm not going to look, but I'm going to, I'm going to aim for this ring and pick it up. And I should be pretty close. If it ends up out over one of these things, then there's a problem. And so straight back, straight forward. I'm going to lift. And I, I like to say lift and pluck. Lift, pluck the fly. And then this is as far back as I'm going to go. This is where I'm going to stop. And so I want you to watch, and I'll, I'll do it in this direction too. I want you to, I want you to watch my thumb. I'm going to reach over and scratch my ear. I'm going to reach over, scratch my ear, and go forward. And that's, a, that's really about as far as I'm going to go. If I, I'm, I might do a little bit of drifting afterwards, but the stopping point really is right here by my ear. And that puts it straight up in the air. And um, so the timing that I like, I never turn around and watch my, I never turn around and watch my back cast. Maybe occasionally, but for the most part, I like to feel it. And if you watch this piece of line between my hand and my guide, see that little bounce? It means it's time to go forward. You can feel it. And uh, I find a lot of times people do even better when they close their eyes. And there it is right there. I can feel it. Practice with your eyes closed. Also practice with targets. You notice I, I put these rings out there because if you just go out into the grass and you just cast, what you'll find is all you do is cast as far as you can. And it's really not that useful. It's much more useful to be able to hit these targets that we have inside here. Okay, now the forward cast is a mirror of the pickup. So um, you see, remember how I'm letting my wrist kind of, kind of lag and then plucking? I'm going to do exactly the same thing going forward. Um, I'm going to drag it, drag it, drag it. My hand's going to be all the way out here before I apply the power. So I'm going to bring it back, I'm going to lean forward, and out I go. Um, it's going to help a lot with accuracy if you um, pay attention to your stance. And I told this fellow here earlier, because he was standing this way, had a really nice cast, but I said, but it really wasn't going straight. It wasn't going where he wanted it to go. If you simply put your right foot forward, I know this goes against a lot of what, what you've read or been told or something, I'm telling you, it's going to force you to use the rod. If I, if I stand sideways, I'm gonna, my rod's going to be out here. You can see what my back cast is doing. And that's a pretty athletic way to do it. I'm much lazier than that. I'm going to put, my, I'm gonna put my, my right foot forward, left hand if you're a left, uh, or left foot if you're a left hand caster. And, I, and I'm, go, I'm going to, I'm gonna keep everything in line with my, with my line of vision. So I want you to watch my hand and watch my eyes. And I'm most likely going to hit my target. So let's, let's do that again. I'm going to pick it up, look at my hand, look at my eyes. And I'm, it's always going to go where I'm looking. If my back cast is straight, let's do that. If my back cast is straight, and I move the rod forward in a straight line, how could it do anything but go straight? It can't end up over there or over there. It has to go straight. Um, if I'm looking down the rod, if you were, how many shooters, this is Virginia, we got a lot of shooters, right? Gabrielle's a shooter. And, and what you wouldn't do, you wouldn't take your gun and hold it out here and hit your target. But yet when you cast, I see the rods all going out to the side. I know there's a, there's a time to, to cast out to the side, but if you want to hit your target, I'm going to watch my eyes and watch the rod. I'm going to look right I'm going to look right down my right down my rod. So it's just like looking down the barrel of a gun. Okay. So back to the forward cast. So my I I've got a nice straight back cast. Now when I go forward, I'm going to I'm going to lead with my arm. Lead with my arm. I still haven't even engaged my wrist. Look at the power I get from my wrist. It's, it's, a, it's, pretty impressive. Uh, it's a pretty impressive tool because it's so much rotation here. 
to get to make that same cast with locking my wrist, I'd have to use quite a bit of arm. I'd have to use I'd have to use my body, which we're going to get to here in a second. Okay. So, and hopefully all those, you've noticed that all those casts have been quiet. If you hear it, there's a problem. Here are the, here are the things that make noise. Too much rod movement. Because we don't have it loaded. And the other thing that might, that might make noise is if you have more power than you have line. Now I've got a pretty short line, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast really hard. Now, you might want to cast that hard, but it doesn't have enough line to load the rod, so the rod's going to vibrate. Okay. Now, we'll talk about the landing. I'm going to make my, I'm going to make my pickup back. I'm going to unload my wrist, and, and I'm going to stop. I want you to notice that I'm stopping with a letter V. If I make that letter L, the line goes down. So, let's, we'll talk through it again here. Lift, pluck the fly, wait on it, end with a letter V, and set it back down. And when I make that, when I make that soft presentation, I, I love the visual of a clothesline. I had a clothesline when I was a kid. I don't see too many of them anymore. But I love the visual of a clothesline in the air. And that clothesline, once it's out in the air, I'm going to follow it down with the rod tip. This is really important because I'm going to show you a couple things that you can do that are really kind of cool. If I had an obstacle, like that orange or that, like that yellow uh, ring, and I, and I have a fish on the side of it, well, I could walk over here and, and try and get one back behind it, or I could, just, I could just stand right here, cast right over the top of it, and go right around. If you want to go around the other side, we can, we can do that. So now, I, and I can fish in places that I can't even see. If I'm fishing a, if I'm fishing a shoreline, and I, and I, want, to, and I want to cast, and now you look at this, I'm, I'm bringing the fly right along the shoreline. I'm not even bringing it back to me. Um, where when we snook fish on the beach, um, the worst thing you can do is put it right on the fish's nose. And that's what everybody tends to do. It's like, they'll tell me, it's like, man, I had it right in front of his nose and he wouldn't eat it. And I think of that like, a, like giving somebody a donut. If I shoved the donut in your face, it wouldn't be that appealing. But if I put it on a cart and pulled it away, I'm guessing you'd follow me. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. Here's how I'm gonna offer that fish a donut. I'll do it over here. So in, instead of trying to put it right in front of the fish and then, and then I'm stripping it, and, and I always read this in books. It'll say cast beyond the fish and then strip it so it's right in front of him. And he's not gonna eat it because bait doesn't swim into the fish's mouth. It always gets the heck away from the fish. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that, that simple little bend and now if you look at the fly and look at the path of the fly, I'm actually pulling it away from the fish. Where, when it's sunny and you're on, a, on a, a boat, you're on the deck of a boat, particularly important because you're gonna cast quite a shadow. I mean, you're gonna, you're, they're gonna see you. So if I, if I can do this, and now the fish is going in that direction, he heading toward you, that he's not looking at me. He's not gonna see my shiny watch or my, or my hat or my rod. He's looking off into the horizon. So, um, okay, so, and if you're a trout fisherman, which I know we have a lot of them here, and you're fishing a fly downstream, um, I see this cast a lot. Somebody will do like a, like a stack cast. And that's okay, and you see all the slack that I've got there. It's called a slack line cast. And, and that's okay until you see a fish over here and you want to pick it up. Now you've got all the slack you've got to bring in. The one that I would prefer is that one right there. And even though, and you might say, well, it's the same, but it's not. The other one had curly cues in it. This one has a shape. If I have a shape, I can, on my pickup, let's make, let's make some big ones. Okay, now to pick that up, if I just yanked it, it would, be, it would be pretty awkward. You might be able to do it if you're strong enough. But now I've got this here. All I have to do is pay attention to the shape, trace the shape off the water, lift and pluck, and out I go. So, so now when, when, when that line is coming upstream, or I'm fishing upstream, and, and I get all this line, or maybe I do something crazy, all I have to do is just wiggle it right out, pick it up, and make my cast. I'm doing all that before I make my my back cast. All right. 
so we know how to put we know how to put shapes in we know how to take shapes out all that all those shapes have to be removed before we pluck lift and pluck lift remove shapes and then pluck anything we have to do or do has to happen before the pluck all right let me get this undone here what's that oh that's a good question yeah i didn't cover that did i how do you make it curve <laughs> watch my finger that was it now watch my finger when i cast Really what I'm doing is drawing. I'm, I'm an illustrator by trade, so everything for me is visual. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, oops, how'd that happen? I'm just gonna draw that shape in the air. And now I'm gonna draw some wiggles in the air. Whatever it is, it's gonna materialize there. So whatever I do right here, in these tiny, tiny movements, it's going to expand it's, as it goes out. And it, so uh, I'm, I'll make, little tiny wiggles right here with my finger but look what i ended up with so now i'm gonna i'm just gonna i'm just gonna draw a letter c a backward c and it materialized does that make sense okay let's talk about that that casting that forward casting motion because it's it's really important and that's where a lot of things go south It also gives me a chance to, um, to highlight the Debbie Hansen series, uh, set, True 7. This is a 7 weight. This is the perfect rod for most of the fishing you do. So let's, let's get this out. Now, this is, a really, this is a really straightforward movement. It's not like throwing a baseball. I used to, to pitch, and, there, and, and to throw a baseball, there's all sorts of complicated movements that you make. And then you do it with your left hand, and it, it really looks silly. That's not what this is. Any, you can do this with, with either hand. And so let's just make a couple of casts here. Let me get this here. Your, cat, your, your lines, let me get just a little bit out with this. There we go. So the lines should be exactly the same. In fact, sometimes you'll notice it with your, with your off hand, your loop will be even better because you're moving it even straighter. Now, forget about the lines. I want you to watch my hands. They're doing exactly the same thing. If my hands and my, and my arms are doing exactly the same thing, why wouldn't the lines do exactly the same thing? This is a, a great way to practice. Another way that you can do that, another way to make that point is just right here. So I get a little more line. I want you to try this when you go home and, and see how this works for you. It'll be good. So just make some, make some false casts with your, with your right hand, and that's good. Then put your left hand up here. Make, make a nice two-handed false cast. Now just bring the whole operation over here to this side of your head and take your other hand off. These should all be just the same. And then if you want to get fancy after each stop, you can, you can change hands. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter which direction. If you want to walk down the beach, you can walk down the beach like this. It doesn't matter as long as your hand is moving straight back and straight forward. You can do it equally well with either one. Okay, any questions before we go on? All right. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about stance because I think it's, it's, it's really important and it also, uh, I'm going to show you how to use your body a little bit. Um, I'm not big on, if you're on a boat and you're on the front and you've got somebody on a polling platform, or maybe you're in a canoe and you make a cast like this and you false cast a bunch, you're going to not be very popular because the guy's up there trying to, it's like riding a mechanical bull. So that's why I like your foot forward. Now I'm going to put all my weight on my front, on my front foot. And that's really all I need to do. And, and Debbie taught me a yoga move that looks like, looks like this. And you should make, make the same cast. You notice how I'm not rocking. Now, if, if, I, if, I want to, if I want to add some distance, and 
the, the logical thing would be, well, you have to move your arm farther. Well, you really don't. You have to move the rod farther. And that's the key. So I'm going to add a little bit of distance. I want you to watch my shoulder. I just moved it 13 inches. Now I want you to watch my arm. I just moved it 13 inches. So which, which seems easiest to you? Watch this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean forward. I'm going to put my arms out. I'm going to lift, pluck, push off on my back leg. And I'm going to make that really nice long cast. I'll do that again. We'll pick up a little bit more line. I'm going to reach forward, put my weight on my back foot, push off with my leg, and out we go. And that's going to go as far as you, as far as you want to go. I didn't cast any harder on that one than, than I did when I was throwing at the... At, my longest cast yeah yeah okay I was just busted because I said I always put my right foot forward and and the the exception to that is if I'm making a really long cast I'm gonna I'm gonna widen my stance and so I get more uh, more power but most of that cast was done with my leg thanks for pointing that out um, even when I do put this leg back I want you to notice both of my, my, my toes are pointed at my target, my belt buckle's pointed to my target, my Adam's apple, my nose, everything, I've got my hand, my rod, everything is, is heading straight for that target. So how could I miss it? I gotta hit it, it's going straight. As soon as I start, as soon as I start this, now I've got all sorts of calculations I have to make and hope that it goes in. You see the difference in those? Anybody that shoots a gun always, always picks up on this. I'm going to look right down the barrel at my target. Okay, you should always have a target. Even I don't care if you're out in the middle of a lake and you're just casting. Pick a flicker on the water or a leaf or something. Always have a target. A higher target will go farther. So I'm going to, I'm going to aim for that for that ceiling out there, and that's how and that's going to go until it runs out of either line or energy set up here okay so now then the next thing that and, and I see this um, I, I do about 200 private lessons a year and and the one thing two things I always see I always see lousy roll casts and I see um, people not shooting the line properly so let's take let's take that one first here's what not shooting it properly looks like how many how many of you have ever ended up with this right here if the if the line ever ends up around your the butt or around the rod or around the reel. Only one thing causes that, and that... Hello? I don't think it was me. Only one thing causes that, and that is letting go of the line too soon. And that actually worked out pretty well. But let's, I'm gonna show you a trick here that I do. So my rod has about nine guides on it. I'm gonna add one more, and it looks like this. So I want you to watch this hand I'm gonna make my I'm gonna make my cast and I'm gonna make a circle and look how I've now I have control over it. The reason that that's important, let's say that let's say that I want to cast to that that second the, the first orange hoop there. Well, I've got all this line out and I get excited and I, and I and I cast and I let go, but now I've just overshot it. I really don't have any recourse. I don't have any way to stop it. If I control the line in my left hand. I want you to watch my left hand. Don't watch the line. Watch my left hand. And, and I'm going to let it go, and I'm going to clamp it. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to let it go, and I'm going to clamp it. What's that? Okay, thanks. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll do that again here. I'm going to let the line go and clamp it. I'm just putting the brakes on. And in that way, you can get this close to your target. You can, you can let it get right up to it. And, and clamp the line, just put the brakes on. Okay, the other thing I like to do, for, it's a more advanced thing, but I really don't shoot too much line on my forward cast. I do most of it on my back cast. So I want you to watch, watch my back cast, watch my hand. 
and I clamp it and go forward. When I do that, I get extra spring from the rod. I'm going to do it again. We'll do a little less line here. Okay. That'll be good right there. So, so I've got all this line out. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to shoot almost all the line. See how much I've got out? Now when I go forward, I don't really have much to do except for aim at my target. So let's do that kind of in real time here. I'm going to lift, pluck, shoot the line, and then when I go forward, I can make, I can make all those whiz-bang moves that I was showing you, or I can, I can focus on that. When, um, if you think about it, everything about fly fishing is opposite from spin fishing. So if in spin fishing, we have a weight on the end of it, and we're throwing a weight. So you bring it back slowly, and you throw the weight. And when you do that, the, so if you've got a spoon on, let's say, the spoon pulls the line. It pulls that thin monofilament or braid line. And this, the lure is always the first thing to arrive. In fly fishing, the lure is the last thing to arrive because the line pulls the lure. Okay, so if that's opposite, here's what else is opposite, is how we apply the power. If I bring it back slowly and try and do this, that's, it's, it's not how it wants to work. It, because it needs to be opposite. So I'm going to apply the preponderance of my power on the back and less in the front. So I want you to think of it like this. And there's exceptions to everything. Maybe you've got a 20 mile an hour wind in your face and you're going to change things up. But for the most part in our, in our current conditions in the, uh, in the auditorium here, I'm going to put most of the power in the back and then very little in the front. And I call this a push button grip because I'm going to apply the power going back with my middle finger. I'm going to lift, pluck, and when I go forward, I'm just going to I'm just going to push it. I'm just going to push that button, and out I go. Now, the other thing, the other uh, drill I'd like for you to try when you go home is this one right here. I want you to stop, and after you stop, just drop the rod in your other hand. Cast is over. Once I stop the rod, cast is over. That line's going to keep, in fact, I can put it in his hand and the line's just going to keep going. Once I stop, the cast is over. Once I stop in the direction of my target, the cast is over. Okay, so let's kind of re back up here a little bit. So we, we have our target. We have our back cast. I want you to check your back cast. Make sure that it's going relatively straight behind you um, because the line always wants to go straight. If, if, if my back cast is over here and I want it to go over here, it doesn't, it doesn't want to work. If, if my back, if, let me, let me put one a little bit farther over here. Okay, if my back cast is over here, it, it wants to go over there. That's a smooth cast because it, it went in a straight line. I'm not a fan of the microphone here. So if, there we go thought I had one. All right. If my back cast is straight and I drive it straight, I'll 100% of the time hit my target. Now we may have to account for wind or some, some things like that. Okay. So the, now we're, let's move on to the, <laughs> yeah, it works. Um, and, and I'll say this, there's really a lot of ways to do this. A lot of right ways to do this. I just really happen to like my right way the best. So I, and, and, and I become obsessed with making it as easy as possible. So, so if, if it's easy on you and, and, you're, and, and you like the way it feels, then I would do it that way. Okay, so now let's, let's talk about roll casting. Here's what I see. The, the, the biggest problem with roll casting is the name. There's no rolling to it. I'm going to... Here's what I see a lot of times, and they'll roll it out. And that's, what a, that's pretty much what roll casts look like. And they're rolling it out. Why wouldn't you do it that way? Because that's what it's called. Now, I've spent a fair amount of time explaining how to take the rod and move it forward and hit my target. So why wouldn't I do that if I'm doing a roll cast? So here's how I'm going to do a roll cast. My back cast is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to drag it. I'm going to drag it back. And now the line, and I want, I want a little bit of line behind me enough to load the rod, but going forward, it's going to be exactly that same stroke. I'm going to grab the line and out I go. And so sidearm back, 
up. I'm going to scratch my ear. See, it's a little like that. The Spacecast is, um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, well, Rollcast is a space. Spacecast is a Rollcast. So, sidearm back. That's your back cast. We're done. And notice how my back cast is in line with my target. If I swing it out here like this, now I've got, I, I'm probably not going to hit my target. So straight back, rod up, out I go. Okay, so in one of the most valuable casts I think you can learn is a, is a roll cast pickup. So let's say that I've got a, I've got a genuine mess here. And so now what am I going to do? I can strip it in, but my fish is, my fish is ready to eat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron out all those wrinkles, put the line up, jump the line in the air, and out I go. I'll do that again. So when you practice this, give yourself give yourself a mess here that you have to that you have to get yourself out of. So drag it on back. The farther back, the easier it is. The more line you have back here, the more it's going to load the rod. Bring it up here. I, I'm looking I'm looking right down the rod, and I'm going to jump the line up in the air, not let it hit the water. And out I go. Okay. So any any other questions? We're gonna talk about double haul right now. And so the double haul is like the is like this this little tiny stupid thing that everybody argues about and writes about and and, it, and it's really simple. What a haul is, here's what a haul shouldn't be. See how that suffered? I'm applying the power at the wrong time. Now, if you do anything hard enough, it's probably going to go. But I'm going to I'm going to show you what I think is the best haul. I want you to watch my hand again. And it's it's not how much I do it or how hard I do it, it's when I do it. So, I'm going to load the rod first. I'm going to lift. I've already told you the timing about this. I'm going to lift and then I'm going to pluck with both hands and look at the power I get from that. We'll go a little bit farther here. Once again, I'm gonna I'm gonna lift the rod. Now, now this is I would call this inline hauling because if you notice, my hand is in line with the rod. I said earlier that my Adam's apple, my toes, my belt buckle, everything is going to the target. This is one more thing that's going to go to the target. In fact, I'm going to use this right here, just like a rifle sight. I'm going to pick it up, watch where my hand is, and I point it right to my target. I'll do it again. Watch my eyes. Watch my, watch my haul hand. Everything I've got is going right to that target. It's always going to hit it. It has to because everything is going straight. Now what happens is, if I if I haul to the side, like I see a lot, which is okay, like this. The first thing that happens is this arm wants to go out here, and I don't really want that. I want everything snug. So I'm not really coordinated enough to bring this one out to the side and that one straight. Everything to me has to do the same thing. Now I'm gonna take that haul, put it with that, with that little bit of body movement. I'm gonna lift, pluck the fly off the water, wait on it, and out I go. And it's gonna go, it's gonna go straight and it's gonna go quiet. Did you notice how quiet that was? And they should, al they should always be very quiet. Okay. Let's put that together now uh, with that that hull, and I didn't explain the. Uh, let me explain the hull a little bit better. We're going to use the hull to pluck the fly off the water, and then we're going to use the hull exactly when we turn the wrist over. So I can see I can see my fingernail before I haul, and that would be considered uh, to be a late haul. Um, there's kind of the misuse of a hull is to bend is to use it to to load the rod initially. So if you see somebody like, like this, well, they're, they're using the wrong part of the rod. Actually, could you hold on to the line there for me real quickly? Yeah, there you go. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show you the two parts of the rod. And I'm not an expert on, on rods. I direct you over to Chris Riley if you have questions about that. I want you to hang on to it really tight. I want you to hang on to it tight with both hands. Okay, so I've, I've hooked my fish here. And, and that, and the farther back I bring the rod, the weaker it is. You're not feeling much, right? Okay, now, so the tip is the wrong part of the rod to fight most of the fish that we catch in Florida. Um, so you're not feeling that. Now, hang on to it really tight. 
Okay, so if the fish is heading to the mangroves, I'm going to do something like this. You see the difference? Okay, do that again. I won't, I won't yank so hard. Okay, now look at the tip of the rod. The tip of the rod is totally straight. It's also totally useless to me once I hook a fish. Thanks. In fact, I'd be, I'd be better served if I could take the tip off and fight the fish. So the tip, I want you to think of it this way. We're going to call this, this right here, technical term here, this is the tip. And this part right here, we're going to call the rest of it. So <laughs> the rest of it is for fighting fish. Now I'm going to show you what happens when I use the wrong part of the rod. We saw what happens when I use the wrong part of the rod to fight a fish. Here's what happens when I use the wrong part of the rod to cast a fly. It goes out. See, I'm, I'm trying to bend that rod very deeply. Now I'm going to, with, with less effort than that, I'm going to sh I want you to watch the tip of the rod because I'm only going to engage the tip of the rod. I think that works better. It's also easier. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do that again. I want you to, I'll, I'll do a shorter cast because the distance isn't that important. I want you to watch the tip of the rod. All casting is, is bending and unbending the tip of the rod. Because this, this line has mass to it, because it has weight, when I pull against it, it's going to bend or load the rod. When I stop it, when I unspring it, that's when all the good stuff happens. So let's watch two casts. One is going to have no appreciable stop. And, and I'll tell you, in, in some cases, golfers are some of the hardest people to teach. Sometimes they're the easiest, but a lot of times good golfers are hard to teach because they have this beautiful follow through. I want the absence of a follow through. That's what I want. I want to unspring or unload the rod. So here's a cast with no appreciable stop. Nice follow through. Okay, that, that's all right. And then here's one with absolutely no appreciable stop or with no, with no follow through. There's a big difference, I think. Um, any questions?